This is a demonstration on old-fashioned rifling. I am uh, currently rifling a 45 caliber uh, muzzleloading barrel. After I get this rifle, I'll build it into a long rifle. Uh, this is the general idea behind this machine: is that as I pull this back and forth, there's, on the other end of this rod, there's a cutter, and uh, as as I pull back and forth, this angled rod causes this to go back and forth as you've seen and that causes this rod to rotate. There's a gear inside of here and uh, as, it, as it rotates through the barrel it cuts the rifling. I once one groove is cut I'll index it to the next as you've seen I do here. I have a 24 tooth gear in here so any number that is evenly divisible by 24 into, into 24, I can do that many grooves. So I can do 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, or 12 grooves. I'm currently doing 6 in this barrel. I generally pull, pull it about 10 times per groove before I index it. Uh, this is just an easy number to remember and it's about maximum the amount of chips that it can be, a cutter can hold uh, when you put a new shim underneath it. I'll now uh, move to the cutter end and show you that and how that works. Here is the cutter. Uh, this is after the last pull, this is how many chips were there. Uh, it's a good amount. A couple more passes, and I'll have to raise it up. It's pretty much during use, and just pretty much throw a little oil on there, clean the chips off. Once it once it quits cutting, I have put a uh, a shim underneath the cutter and pop pop it out of that wood. I'll show you that in a little bit when it quits cutting. I went around one more time, uh, pulling ten times in each groove. The uh, amount of chips it pulled that time is a lot less. I'm going to raise the cutter now. The cutter just held in there by friction just tap it out and underneath there see a bunch of tiny little shims I usually add about one thousandths at a time once it stops cutting uh, a little, nice little pile there you can get the, get the new shim kind of added to the pile And simply set them back down in there. Press it down. I use a copper just to protect it. As I press it down in there, make sure everything's good to go. And now we're ready to cut some more chips.